right, welcome back to Jack of All Trades training, where I try to prepare you for your certification exam one topic at a time. This week, we're going to be looking at engineering tolerances and some of the terms and uh, some ideas behind that. So what are tolerances? Tolerances set the allowable deviation from assigned dimensions. Uh, so in, in manufacturing, uh, not setting a tolerance could result in useless parts or something that no one really needs or, or something that maybe needs mod modification. So the process used to produce a part will have some level of inaccuracy, whether it's a drilling or milling or grinding. So by placing the tolerance on the part, uh, we can make uh, the focus of their efforts on selecting a process which will result in uh, a usable part, uh, which one that and one that's the most cost effective. Uh, so let's ask our first question here. What can tolerances be applied to? Tolerances can be applied to many things. They can be applied to linear dimensions, surface finish, um, parallelism, concentricity. So these are uh, things like if you were machining a block, how parallel are the two sides? Surface finish, I think is quite obvious how rough something is. Um, the concentricity of it, if it's a, a shaft, how, how accurate are you um, with each one of the step downs uh, relative to each other? Hardness uh, is an obvious one, the resistance penetration, flatness. Um, we can set these tolerances to angles. So not only linear measurements, but then if you have a piece that has an angle on it, it has to be within a certain tolerance of that angle. And then we have um, the chamfers or the size of chamfers and the uh, radius on a part that may need to have a certain tolerance on it for receiving you know, the shoulder of a bearing or something like that. But the big one that I wanna focus on here is the linear dimension. And so from a maintenance standpoint, that is the most important one. Okay, so in this example, the two inches here is really just uh, what we would refer to as a nominal dimension. So that nominal dimension, if we just post it on the drawing, whoever's manufacturing this block would look at that two inches and then they would apply an ISO standard 286 to that. The standard ISO 286 means that, okay, if it's two, if it says two inches to within that three decimals and, and that's, that's a specification, there's a there's a allowable difference in the size that I can make that part to depending on the actual. So if it's two inches, it's gonna be much different um, range of tolerance than if it was 10 inches long. And so the, whatever that size is, there's gonna be a slight differentiation of that. A different way to do this would be to write it out as two inches and and then I would put a tolerance on it. So I can do the tolerance a, a few different ways. One way that I can do it is I can go, uh, I can be plus, let's say five thou minus nothing. Okay, so this would be an example of a unidirectional tolerance where it's two inches long and it can be, I can be at a maximum five thou larger. The other way to do it is to say, um, it's, 20,000 and, uh, or yeah, I could say it's uh, two inches and two thou plus three thou, and it could be minus 0.2 thou or two thou. So this is an example of a bi-directional tolerance where I can go positive three, negative two from my two, two inch and two thou. So the point of this would be if I just if I if it's a if it's a spacer or something that maybe I just want it to be slightly oversized, um, it can be there. But if it's size for size, that's all right. Next question is why have a bilateral tolerance when you can just adjust the nominal dimension and use a unilateral tolerance? So what I mean by that is I have here a range of five thousand. So in this dimension of this part, I can be at a maximum. I can be. Um, two inches and five thousandths of an inch, or at a minimum, I can be two. So why would I rate it where it's two inch plus five thou minus two thou in this bi-directional, when instead I could write that dimension as
as this is the same range. I still have the same range of two two inches and five thou to two inches. In this one, it's it's the I'm setting the nominal dimension for the bottom and going to five. So why do a bidirectional when you could do a unidirectional? And the answer is when you set your nominal uh, diameter or it's not diameter your nominal dimension, and you specify which which direction that it can be um, deviated from, positive or negative, in a unilateral configuration, it means that the manufacturer is going to shoot to make it two inches. That's where their goal is. They're trying to make it two inches, but if they go over it, that's all right. So the example of this would be if we were applying this to like a drill hole, and maybe when we we're drilling the hole, we don't have to drill the hole smaller and then ream it out. Maybe we'll just use a two inch drill bit. And if it goes a little bit oversized, that's all right for the tolerance that we're looking at. We can make it cheaper part for better, but they're going to be shooting to make it that two inches. Whereas this part, they're going for two inches and two thou plus or minus. So for this um, application, it's going to be, they're actually going to be shooting for the two inches and two thou. They're not going to be shooting for two inches exactly. So that nominal diameter or the nominal dimension is exactly is the size that we're looking to achieve. And then we're varying from that. So even though we have a five thou range of both of these unidirectional and bidirectional tolerances, they're going to shoot to try and make it whatever the nominal diameter is or dimension I keep saying diameter. And so last up, should all dimensions and parts ha on a technical drawing or, or a working drawing have the tolerance specified? And the answer is no. You don't need to specify everything. The, the specifications of tolerances only apply where it's needed. Otherwise, it's a ISO standard. The ISO standard was ISO 2768 that we use normally in, in Canada or North America or um, in in metric using countries, so maybe not as much America, they have their own ASME standard, I believe. But those technical standards, if you if you say it, if you rate that dimension to a 64th, there's a there's a table and a chart that's referenced in the engineering handbooks where you would look for how what the actual dimension range would be for that for that part. So all dimensions and parts don't need to be specified as tolerances, but they do have to have that nominal size. And then you can, you know, make things according to the ISO specifications, you'd specify the tolerances or something that's um, much needed. So that's it for this video. Please like, subscribe, and um, and stay up to date and uh, and send me some feedback if this is a video that's, uh, or these video series are, are working for you. Um, I really enjoy doing it, and I really hope that you guys are finding some value out of it. So thank you for um, reviewing for your exam with me.